He was an Italian. Actually, he was an apothecary from Genoa. An ordinary apothecary from Genoa. <laughs> yeah. It just happened that he knew more chemistry than anyone else. Anyone in England. England. <laughs> what year right. was that? That was in the 1640s. The 1640s, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It so. was in this period. England An was ordinary very... apothecary from Italy knew more <laughs> chemistry than anyone. In England. And the Civil we've, War didn't help that uh, no, it didn't spread help of knowledge right. at all. Well, we, and we've said over and over again in, in convention after convention and in, in articles and mm -hmm. on the bar over and over again that, that you know, every, so many people come into the 1632 community and they're going, oh, the 1600s, you know, everyone was largely illiterate. Mm -hmm. you know, and true enough in England. In England, it's true. In England, yeah. it's true enough, and in Germany, it's just completely not true. Everyone is, it's for even, some definition, it's of even not true in Scotland, no, or no, Ireland, no. or Wales, or or Sweden, or right. Sweden, or Sweden. But uh, but England, the being, England was almost the only country on the continent of Europe where the aristocracy had a deliberate policy of keeping most people illiterate. It, yes. Right. As opposed to in the Germanies, the statement that you've said over and over again, literate in the sense of being able to read printed material and write on a chalkboard. Yes. You know. uh, literate to what I what the schools themselves at the time considered a fourth grade level. Mm -hmm. uh, and able to means able to do business. Enable basically people to do business. Which means that I've done this. Have any of you, except the ones who come all the time, <laughs> uh, are, you, are you familiar with the level at which different subjects were introduced in the schools at the time? OK. Let's talk about writing. Children are taught to write with chalk on a slate. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up in the 1940s, 1950s, typing was first introduced in high school. Mm -hmm. Now kids keyboard in kindergarten. Yeah. In the 1630s, really, from the introduction of printing, and the ready availability of printed matter on. The ability to print with chalk or a pencil, pencils were available mm -hmm. on a slate, was an entirely different skill from being able to write with a quill and ink which was not introduced until what there amounted to secondary school. After you were out of the village elementary school into the fourth, the fifth grade through eighth grade and secondary school. So that would be about school, 10 to 12? 10 to 14. That was when you could be trusted with liquid ink. A, no, wait. With a pen knife? A pen knife. And with a a block of carbon yeah. with an inkwell in which to mix the carbon and the thing. Writing, handwriting, was not taught until the upper elementary level, and therefore the need to read handwriting was not taught until the upper elementary level. Uh, which means that a German who had no problem whatsoever in picking up a printed newspaper and reading it, or the printed Bible and reading it, could not necessarily write or read a letter that was handwritten. He might have to take it to somebody who knew how to read handwriting. And if you've ever looked at early modern handwriting, uh, it was as variable and frequently as horrible as ours. Uh, again, in the next story, I have uh, 
the Duchess Claudia and her uptime amanuensis puzzling over the latest letter received from Duke Bernhardt. And I assure you, historically and genuinely, he had one of the worst handwritings ever produced by human left-hander. Mm -hmm. uh, left hand with a quill. Oh, God. <laughs> left hand with a quill. Oh, jeez. Well, she's shown us in previous years photos, top photographs of the stuff that we're, that she's talking about. Mm -hmm. And I swear to God, she can read it. And it's, it's random squiggly lines across the piece of paper. And loops. I mean, and with, with loops, but just random squiggly lines across a piece of paper. If there is semantic content there that you're not inventing, it's completely beyond my ability well, to interpret. Yeah. I know you taught <laughs> classes on how to read, but. Well, you know, <laughs> there are, it's a skill set. Uh, <laughs> I, took a, uh, I took a summer seminar to start with. Uh, it's given at the Institute for Reformation Research, which is not on but off the, com com the campus of Concordia Theological Seminary in St. Louis. Can you imagine why it's off the campus? <laughs> because they have lots of women attending it, and heaven forbid that the Missouri Synod of the Lutheran Church would have women on their theological <laughs> May Heaven forbid. forbid. Um, if it does, forbid. <laughs> <laughs> so they at least in so they have this, Just outside the gates, it's funny. They have this line of townhouses for <laughs> for social workers, for Reformation historians, for church organists. You know, for all these people who happen to be women. Happen to be women, but need something <laughs> that they're teaching. And presumably, you can place a library request from off campus? No, actually, the library is right inside the gate. And you can ah. go inside the gate and use the library. Well, that's a how liberal of them. That's a dispensation, <laughs> right? We'll give you a dispensation. Uh, uh, yes. Hmm? Yeah, really. What? How, how forward thinking. Tim? Oh, I was just going to say, you know, you guys are talking about Lutherans and Baptists, oh my, but um, you haven't even begun to throw the Jews into the middle of this. Oh, oh, oh yeah. that's another. Uh, that's there's, another place. there's a reason for that. That, that, a, that takes takes whatever's going on with the Lutheran liturgy and Psalm 93 before Psalm 67, God forbid, and and just just triples yeah, it. I think but, certainly. Uh, but you have this, and uh, you have then the question is, uh, you know, of uh, so you have literacy. You can communicate to people with the printed word easily. And math. They did a and, lot of. And basic math. Uh, you know, the Weird Tech had a wonderful time with, you know, what, how complicated it is to do a <coughs> computer, computer and a calculator and things like that. But I swear that one thing they're going to introduce from Grantville right away, because a bunch of the old guys will have them. My grandfather had them. I used one. He held them. You know what I'm going to talk about? Slide rule? No. Oh. I used My a slide grandpa rule. was a farmer. He kept it in his pocket. It was a little oblong of uh, metal. A metal, a little metal. But, and then you had a stylus and you just yeah, pulled the awesome. numbers up and those. down. I mean, baby. those will be manufactured by the hundreds of thousands long before they get one four function calculator uh, computer back or computer yeah. out and they will be all over the place and they're going to be all the math that the average person needs uh, you know this is something that scientists have trouble dealing with but here I am I have not failed my way through life but the highest math I ever took was advanced algebra trig and solid geometry. And it's the highest math I've ever needed beyond statistics. Uh, for what I do, sophisticated mathematics is not necessary. Not necessary. It really, really isn't. Uh, now, it's going to be different for my grandchildren. Uh, Marie finished uh, calculus one in high school. 
for senior year in high school and is you know, heading on into beyond AP calculus and AP statistics into all sorts of advanced things in college. And she plans to go into early childhood education with a secondary major in music education, but she still figures she's going to need the math in a and, modern And that may change in the next, <laughs> knowing, knowing college freshmen, that may change anyway. Oh so. no, she's, going, she's known since she was a freshman, and not freshman in high school, but yeah. she's, she came home for her first day in kindergarten announcing, I'm going to be a teacher. Yeah. And she has not wavered one iota. She has been on uh, I, yeah, Project I, Timothy, uh, which sends uh, teams of would-be teachers out to high needs areas. Uh, she spent a summer in El Paso, Texas, bringing immigrant children up to speed before they started school in the fall. Uh, she uh, does what they call the uh, Taste of Teaching program all the way through high school in which they take kids who think they want to be teachers and put them, well she was going to high school in Wisconsin and they put them in the Milwaukee uh, inner city schools for two days, three days, sometimes even a week at a time. You know, she's going to be a teacher. This girl is not going to change her mind at this point. You're describing my early life. Oh. I'm not teaching right now. So. Uh, are you trying to say she resembles a glacier? Trying to stop one? In many ways, uh, her life is real. We have what, five minutes left. Yeah. What counts as, or looks like, a tube of Lip. chapstick actually is Yamaha Premium Cork Grease. Uh, the, having a woodwind player in your household results yeah. in tubes of cork grease lying around at random to be picked up so nobody slides on them and falls and then enveloped and mailed to the owner. Uh, but, you know, she's not going to change her mind. Uh, but this again, uh, the question of, you know, how do you push the ability to write in handwriting is going to be something that the technology of the Ring of Fire really will change. The arrival of the fountain pen and then the ballpoint pen will make writing with ink accessible much earlier, just as keyboarding is now accessible to children much earlier in than fact, it was two generations in ago. Uh, in New Mexico, they've announced that they are no longer teaching handwriting in the elementary schools. They're not teaching it at all oh. because they're keyboarding. And they yeah, teach- a school in uh, Massachusetts that mm -hmm. has no libraries. They, they got rid of the libraries. Everything's online now. No. But see, there will be technological change, and mm -hmm. this type of thing will come. But a lot, I really wish that more of our authors were focusing on what the, where the impacts will come, rather than approaching it from the perspective of, I have a gadget I really love, and I want to write a story about my widget. Okay, so give us some examples of where the changes are really going. Um, we've been discussing that for an hour. Actually, we've been discussing <laughs> that. We were required to go sign. Yeah, I, have, I understand. Uh, but I'm that's talking that about uh, the comparison of 